Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It is Saturday morning, it's not quite nine o'clock and I'll tell you what, it is rather nippy down here today to the point that I've had to swap my cap for a nice woolly hat that my nan made me a couple of years ago so that I can keep my ears warm. Now it is a Saturday so that does mean we can start a fire down here. So we'll get that started in a moment when I warm myself up with a nice cup of coffee before we start cracking on with some of today's work. Now November and December is a great time to be pruning back some of your fruit trees and also your fruit bushes. Now a lot of my fruit bushes have still got leaves on, whereas the fruit trees they've lost them all, which shows that they are now in their dormant period. Your plums and your cherry trees, they're best pruned in the summertime, so leave them alone at this time of year, but everything else is fair game. So I've got two apples and two pear trees, so today I'll be showing you how I prune them and I'll give you lots of tips and helpful advice as well. I'd also like to try and get some more barrel loads of the bark ship and finish off some of the paths. I mean, we've probably done 80% of the plot now, so we've only got a little bit left to do. So just to warm ourselves up, we'll go and get a few barrel loads of that and see how much of that we can finish off today. And then finally, I would like to try and get in the poly house just to give it a weed. And fingers crossed, it's going to be a little bit warmer than what it is out here. So that is a job that I'll save until this afternoon, just so that the sun can get in there and warm it up a little bit. As always, there will be some other bits and bobs along the way, but first of all, I'm going to start the fire, have a nice cup of coffee to warm myself up, and then we can start having a look at the fruit trees. So come on, let's go start the fire and warm ourselves up a little bit. So this here is my main pear tree on the plot. We get tons of pears off this every year and it is quite established, but at some point between November and February, every year I give it a good old prune back. The reason for pruning is you want to try and maintain that goblet shape, but also it's for the health of the tree itself. Now, if you've got any cordons or espaliers, you want to prune these in the summer along with your cherry and plum trees as well. Now, if you have got a brand new fruit tree and it's only been in the ground a year or two, it might be best not to prune it until it's in its third or fourth year. So before you start doing anything, you want to give your tree a good inspection. So you're looking out for any dead, damaged or diseased wood. We call this the 3Ds. So go around and have a good old inspection of your tree just to see what you think you're going to need to remove. Now would be a perfect time to have a look at diseases and look out for any signs. Canker is probably going to be your main one. So have a little look online just to see what you're meant to be looking out for. Now I'm quite lucky this tree hasn't got any disease or canker on it so I haven't got any examples to show you but just google it online just so that you've got a good idea. So here we have got a perfect example of a damaged branch so over the summer this tree was absolutely laden with pears and because of the weight it has snapped that branch off so we will give that a little bit of attention. So on this one the branch has completely snapped off and as you can see that has caused a little bit of a mess on the branch so we will cut that at a 45 degree angle with a saw and that will just allow the rain to, to fall off it nicely and also the tree should heal a little bit better because at the moment there's a lot of surface area on there and disease could get in there quite easily. So can you notice these two branches are sitting on one another? and that is going to cause some rubbing and some friction in there which could damage the branch over a period of time and that will allow some disease to get in. So we will want to get in here and just make sure that none of these branches are going to be rubbing on each other. Now you're not going to need many tools for this, a pair of secateurs, loppers, a saw and that's just going to depend on how thick the branches are that you're going to be cutting back. A ladder might come in handy if you've got a rather tall tree as well. I haven't got a ladder down here but I have got something that I can stand on because I do want to try and reduce some of the height on this tree today. 
So now we've got all our tools and we've given the tree a good inspection, we can now start going in and remove some of the dead, damaged and diseased wood. I would also remove any crossing branches that might be rubbing on one another and just leave the strongest outward facing branch. So there we go, we have got rid of the 3Ds and we can now start looking at actually shaping the tree itself and reducing some of the height. Now I didn't reduce much of the height last year so I am going to give it quite a cut back today but I wouldn't cut more than 25% off. If it is your first time pruning your tree, I'd be looking at removing around 10-20%, so do keep an eye on that pruning pile as it grows. Now don't forget, you want to make your cut just above a bud, but not any bud, the bud wants to be pointing outwards from the tree. And this is just going to prevent any of that new growth from growing in towards the goblet shape, towards the main trunk, and it encourage them to grow outwards. You also want to be making your cut at a 45 degree angle and this is going to stop any rainfall from collecting where you've just made that cut as it could create some rot or some disease in there. So cutting at that angle just allows the rainfall to drip off. You want to leave about one, two centimetres between your cut and the bud that you're leaving on the tree. So here's the main trunk of the tree and it's starting to grow out towards me. So if we were to make some cuts, say, on this stem here, as you can see, we have got one, two, three, uh, four buds along here. Now, the one that I would want to cut just above is this one because it is pointing away and outwards from the main trunk. So any new growth from that bud is likely to come in this direction here. Whereas if we were to take the bud above it, so this one where my thumb is, any new growth is actually going to go towards the trunk itself and start to fill in some of those gaps which you don't want as you want as much air to pass through this tree as possible to avoid any sort of fungal diseases in the summertime. So if I was to cut this branch, I would cut it a couple of centimetres just above this bud here to allow the growth to go outwards away from the trunk. So we've removed the dead, the diseased, the damaged wood. We've taken some of the height off as well, along with any branches that were overlapping. And now we can just start cutting and pruning inside the actual goblet shape. Now you can leave last year's growth alone and leave it for a second year and only remove them if they're crossing or if it looks a little bit too crowded. You want your next year's fruit to have plenty of space to breathe and avoid any fungal diseases the following year. I should just say, if you are wanting to dramatically change the height or the size of your tree, you're not going to be able to do this all in one go. It's something that you'd need to do over possibly two to three years. You'd do this with a mixture of summer and winter pruning. And if you cut too much off all in one go, you might damage the health of your tree. there we go guys we've managed to reduce quite a bit of that height and we've got rid of all the dead diseased dying wood and also anything that was crossing over but to be fair there is still quite a few more branches on there that I'd like to get rid of but as I said earlier on you don't want to remove too much at once because it could affect the health of the tree itself 
I want to be able to reach the pears at the top. It's just got a little bit too high for me. I have got three other trees as well. We've got a pear over here. That's quite an established tree. That was already here when I got here. Then we've got an apple, which is um, from a stump. So the stump was here. So that's gonna have a really good root system on it. And I've just let these two stems start to grow as trunks. So I will give that a little bit of a prune. And then back over here, we've got another apple, but that has only been planted for a couple of years now. So that isn't established as the other trees, but I will just give it a little trim up. Looking at the apple tree, it's still got leaves on it. So I don't think it's fully dormant just yet. So we'll probably leave this for another month or so. I'll wait for all of those leaves to drop off and then we can start giving it a prune. But because it is only a couple of years old, we're not gonna go too hard on this one. Same with this apple tree here. We've still got plenty of leaves on there, so I don't want to start cutting into it just yet. So again, just another month. But this is only, what, a couple of years, three years growth from the stump itself. And the branches on this are really quite thick. But we did have codling moth on here, so we will be setting some pheromone traps later, well, early next year, April time, just to stop that from happening again. So this pear tree isn't quite as big as my other one, but it is quite an established one. Now there isn't much I want to do here other than just remove a few of the branches in the middle to allow some space and just reduce some of that height as well. So I'm going to stick all of these prunings in the shed just so that they can dry out and this will make beautiful kindling for when I have my little fires down here. I don't know how but it's already 12 o'clock so we've only got a few more hours down here and all we've done today is prune the tree. I don't know why but it took a good two and a half hours to film that and actually do the pruning. Um, it's getting quite windy out there which is why I've popped into the shed. Now I have bought probably three, four microphones now. I've spent a little bit too much money on microphones so I'm just trying to find the best one because they don't seem to like the USB-C connection. Um, so I've got a Rode microphone but it doesn't seem to fit so that is something I'm working on guys because I know I've been promising you a decent microphone for when I'm out there and it's windy. But given that we've only got a few more hours left down here I'm going to go and warm myself up round by the fire and have a spot to lunch but then we really must get in that poly house and give it a weed because that's been on my to-do list for a little bit too long. I think somebody down there has got a bit of a problem with their fire today. Might be a bit too much wet wood, I'm not too sure, but it is going over the entire plot at the moment. Not so much mine, but all across the allotment. But hey ho, that's the fun of autumn and winter. Look at those autumn colours on this ornamental cherry. We've got the burning orange with the bright yellow, but then it's got that fantastic pink stem running all the way through them. I find cherries are possibly one of the most beautiful autumn colours along with the maple. Right, so we're in the poly house. It's currently about 10 degrees, which is a lot warmer than outside. Um, and it's got down to minus 0 0.1. So it's definitely been colder than that outside of the poly house. So I do think that it's starting to keep some heat in here. Now, I want to get down here so that I can do some of the weeding. It's not as bad as what I thought in here, but just to stop some of these from going to seed and making the situation worse, we'll just give this a good old clear out so that come January, we've got somewhere to plant up some lamb's lettuce, some chard and some other sort of leafy greens that will do well over the winter.
Now weeding that didn't take too long at all, so I don't know why I've been putting it off, but these guys, these are suckers from cherry trees. Now the cherry trees are probably a good six to 10 feet away, but they do like to send out runners. So I am gonna have to dig these guys up. So I've got one cherry tree sucker here, and then we've got another one here. So let's get the spade and see if we can dig these guys up as deep as possible. The problem with these suckers is that they're gonna take a lot of the water and the nutrients from the soil around here. So when we do come to summertime and there's tomatoes, these ain't gonna be great. So yeah, we'll try and give them a dig up now and see how much of it we can get out. So here we have got the smallest one that I just dug out. So this is the part that would have been sticking above the soil level. And all of this is the root from underneath. So the cherry tree will send out runners as far away from the plant as possible. And then they'll start to shoot and start new cherry trees. So they're quite smart because they know not to go anywhere near the mother tree itself so that it's not competing for nutrients. It's a good idea to keep on top of these whilst they're small and they're easy to dig out. If you leave them a little bit too long, they can become a little bit of a nuisance. So on the poly house, you can see this bit has already come loose from the door. So I stapled these on and they were naturally sticky anyway. So I think I'm going to try and find some form of super glue that isn't going to dissolve this plastic. And then we will just have to give it another good old staple on. But yeah, that's not great given that it's only been on there probably a few months. So a job for tomorrow is I want to turn this over. It's been sitting there for a good couple of years now, so I'm hoping we're going to have lots of nutrient-rich compost at the bottom of that heap, whereas those two over there, I do need to give them a very good turn. I don't think we're going to have much compost to use from those two, but yeah, just give them a really good turn this time of year. So that is all we've got time for today, folks. I feel like we spent quite a lot of time this morning pruning that tree and going through that. That was quite a difficult one to film this morning, but I hope I was able to give you some tips and some advice when it comes to pruning your fruit trees in the wintertime. We finally weeded the poly house. I don't know why I've been putting that off for so long because that literally took all of three, four minutes. And we've also removed a couple of those cherry tree suckers, which would be taking up a lot of nutrients come the summertime when we've got our tomatoes and our cucumbers in there. So I don't feel like we've done a huge amount today, but tomorrow is a new day and I've got a few jobs that I do want to get done and that is turning the compost heaps. I'd also like to get some of the wood chip down on the paths because we didn't get round to doing that today. I've got some chicken manure that I need to get on the strawberries and the pineberry beds. And looking at the fruit bushes in the fruit cage, because they get colder a lot quicker than the ones down in the corner, they've lost all of their leaves. So I think they're now in their dormant stage. So we could look at pruning some of the fruit bushes tomorrow. I do want to try and buy some bare root fruit bushes for you guys so that I can show you how to plant these up because winter is the best time for that. Now the one from Thompson and Morgan isn't going to get here until March and I believe that's already a potted plant and you can get bare root a lot cheaper this time of year. So I'll have a little look online, see what I can find and hopefully we can get it this side of Christmas. So yeah, we've got quite a few jobs to do tomorrow and I'm hoping that it's not going to be quite as windy and I am going to try out a couple of the mics on the connections tonight and fingers crossed we can get that up and running. So like I say, I will be back down here tomorrow with another little adventure down on the plot but in the meantime guys, take care. Don't forget to subscribe subscribe, like, comment, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you back down here tomorrow. So have a lovely evening, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.